Hey everyone, welcome to part three of the EVA foam proton pack build. Today I'm going to show you how to make the pack frame that'll allow you to attach the pack to your back. Start by heading off to your hardware store and grabbing a piece of half inch PVC conduit. A nice long piece. Mark a section 70 centimeters long and cut it off. I'm using a tubing cutter here. You just spin it and tighten it and spin it and tighten it and spin it and tighten it until it's cut. Make some marks at 15 and 22 centimeters from one end. Cover one end with some duct tape, making sure to remove any unwanted hairs. Find a turtle filled with sand, awkwardly stick a funnel into the pipe, and fill it up like you're pouring a cup of tea, or pouring out a cup of tea, or gently shaking a starfish. Cap the other end with some more tape, and you've got a pipe full of sand. The reason we filled it with sand is so it won't kink when we try to bend it. When you heat PVC, it can release toxic fumes, so make sure you're wearing a respirator and are doing it outside. I can't film very well outside, so I'm doing it in my garage with both doors open. Secure a piece of 2 inch ABS pipe to bend around, and turn on your heat gun. I've got mine set to 650 degrees Fahrenheit. Now slowly heat the PVC pipe between the two marks you made. It's important that you go slow to let the heat slowly spread through the PVC. Otherwise you'll end up overheating certain sections and releasing those terrible fumes that will kill you. So take your time and at some point you'll notice that the PVC has become nice and flexible. When that time comes, set your heat gun down somewhere safe and quickly bend your pipe around the other pipe. You want as close to a 90 degree angle as possible. I used the corner of my table saw to check and make sure it was square. If not, you can heat it a little bit and try again. Now make a kind of T-square with two rulers and make a mark 10.5 centimeters up from the curved end of the pipe. Go back to your heat gun and heat a small area right at that line. Lay the long straight end down on a 2x4 with the mark right at the edge. Now bend the pipe down onto the flat surface below, trying to keep everything square and straight. Take off the tape and release the sand. Now do the exact same thing for a second pipe, just make sure that it's a mirror image. As you can see, there's a bit of overlap on the ends of those pipes, so we're going to measure and cut those off now. Get out your homemade T-square, make a mark and cut it 14 centimeters from the curved edge. Attach the two pieces together in the center with the PVC coupling. Make another T-square, this time with something a little more three-dimensional, like a box. Make a mark at 22 and a half and 50 centimeters on both pipes. Then cut the pipes at the 50 centimeter mark. Don't cut them at the 22 and a half centimeter mark, that's for later. Now cut yourself a new section of pipe 33 and a half centimeters long. Make a mark 4.5 cm in from each end, and make marks on each side of the pipe, cutting it right in half. I do this by finding the appropriate piece of anything that's thick enough to raise my pen so that it'll hit right along the center line. As long as the pipe doesn't roll at all while you're drawing, you'll have some nice straight lines. Cut halfway through the pipe on those 4.5 cm marks, stopping when you reach the horizontal lines you just drew. Then cut in from the end along those lines until you have something that looks like this. Heat up the end until it's soft and then bend it around another piece of half inch conduit. Once it cools, you've got an awesome thing. Slide the one finished end onto your pack frame up to the 22 and a half centimeter line. Heat up the other end, making sure it's away from the rest of the frame. And once it's soft, flip it around and create the other connection. If you line it up with the two lines, that'll keep everything nice and square. For the lower crossbar, grab a piece of 1 inch PVC conduit. Cut a piece off 52 centimeters long. I'm using a piece of paper for a straight line and a jeweler's saw to cut it off. If that doesn't make sense to you, you may not have watched part 1 of the Ghostbusters Proton Pack series, so maybe do that right now. Make marks at 14 and 38 centimeters from one end of your 1 inch PVC pipe. Draw a line around the pipe at each of those marks, and a horizontal line that just goes along one side. Make a 3 centimeter mark on a piece of paper, line up the edge of the paper with your horizontal line, and transfer that mark onto the pipe. The area between the horizontal line and your new mark is where you don't want to cut, so put a scribbly line there. Now cut along that line, but not the scribbly part, and then you can cut along the horizontal line. This is a bit tricky because you're only cutting along half of the tube, so at some point your saw blade hits the other side and can't go anymore. At which point you need to switch to a different tool, like one of these, or even your dad's Swiss Army knife. The reason we're doing all this annoying cutting is because we want to transform the tubular end of that pipe into a nice big flat piece. So after lots of patient heating when it starts to get soft, open up the tube as best you can and try and squish it between two flat boards. 
As you can see, it can be a bit of a struggle to get that first flattenation done properly. The goal is to get that board on top nice and flat and then stand on it until it cools and hardens. Once you've got it basically kind of flat-ish, you can reheat certain parts and squish them again to get it totally flat. I think I ended up heating mine three times before I was totally happy with it. Once you're done, it should look kind of like a cleaver. Of course, now you get to do it on the other side, too. And if everything turned out well, it should fit right inside the frame. Cut out this piece from the pattern. I should probably give it a number, let's say 64, and trace it onto the new flat piece of PVC. Cut it out with the jeweler's saw. Did I mention that a jeweler's saw with a spiral wax blade can cut in any direction? That's super handy sometimes. And yep, I forgot, we need a slot for the webbing, so add that now. A knife and a file are super handy for cleaning everything up and making it nice and smooth. Okay, back to the heat gun. Now you don't want all your hard work of flattening to go to waste when you heat this up again. So clamp some thin boards to either side of the flat panel, just leaving the small area that you're going to heat uncovered. Heat it up, and bend it around. Once it's cooled, you've got a cool piece that should fit nicely at the bottom of the pack frame. Now cut a 36 centimeter piece of half inch conduit, mark the center which would be 18 centimeters, do the old sand filling trick, and heat it along the center line. Once it's soft, bend it in a slight V shape. It's going to go in the middle of the bottom support and add lots of strength to those side flat pieces. Heat up the ends and do a crushing move with a clamp. Bend those crushed ends straight up and let them cool. The goal is to have it fit perfectly in the bottom support. If it doesn't fit, you may have to reheat the pipe a little bit and tweak it till it does. While we're in the garage, might as well take a piece of half inch PVC and cut right down the center of it, creating two half round pieces that are 21 centimeters long. Heat each piece up and squish it flat with a piece of wood and your boots. With you in them. All right, now drill some small holes and use some small screws to temporarily attach the bottom support to the pack frame. The reason they need to be small is we're going to use rivets in the same holes later, and if they're too big of holes, the rivets just aren't going to work. Holding the cross piece in the center, mark and cut off any extra that's going to interfere with the webbing slot. Drill and screw one hole on each end of the support brace, and one right in the center to attach it to the one inch pipe. You can use a big hole and a big screw on that one if you want, because there's no rivet going in there later. Alright, with that all held temporarily together, let's add some diagonal straps. Grab the flat pieces you made earlier, use your heat gun to heat them up where they would overlap the sides of the pack frame, slide one end under the flat side piece, and then wrap the other end around the vertical pipe. Cut off any bits that stick out in the wrong places, and cut off the strip where it wraps around the post. And clean up the fuzzy edges with a file. Now you can take everything apart and give it all a good scrub down with a Scotch-Brite pad. That'll help the paint stick better. Now let's put it back together with rivets. Drill out the holes the right size for the rivets you're using. It's important that the holes aren't too big, otherwise the rivets will just pull right through. Stick a rivet in the hole, use a fancy rivet machine to pull the little nail thing out, and there you go riveted. The way a blind rivet works is, as the nail type part is pulled up through the metal tube, the head mushrooms the tube out and then snaps off. Now normally you'd have a little washer on the other end if you were doing this in plastic, but it's pretty hard to get one in there, so I'm not. The rivet for the support needs to go through one more layer, so I'm using a longer rivet. I'm also doing the right thing and putting a washer on it this time. Make sure you only put one rivet on each end of that support piece. Originally, I had two in there, but I ended up having to take one out. If you do need to remove a rivet, it's not too hard to drill it out with your drill. Buy a rivet. And rivet those diagonal straps in place. Cut six spacers with a 44mm hole saw. Just be careful. If you don't have a hole saw, you could also just get a thick broom handle and cut it into little slices. We also need some supports inside the proton pack to give us something to screw into. So grab a piece of wood about 4mm wide and 2mm thick, and cut six 6cm six long blocks. Two of those blocks are going to need one corner rounded off a bit, so they can fit in the round shape of the cyclotron. A coarse file or some sandpaper is great for smoothing out the edges of the discs. Set the frame in place on the back of the pack, and trace around the bottom support piece and the side pieces near the bend. Make a mark right at the bend for the mounting point. 
Now it's important these mounting points end up inside the hollow structure of the proton pack, and that there's enough room to get your little wood blocks in there. There's lots of room under the power cell support box, so let's do that one first. Mark the mounting point, make a mark straight through the center of the mounting point and the length of the block. Then cut a little flappy door flap right down that center line and a little bit wider than the width of the block. That door is going to open up and let our block slide right in. But we need some way of holding onto the block. So screw a screw in the approximate middle of the block. But only part way in. And now that screw is a little handle. Now grab onto that screw head and rotate the block in through the door. Awkwardly apply hot glue to as much of the top of the block as possible, and then pull the block up against the foam using the screw head while holding the door firmly shut with your fingers. Now there isn't as much room to play with on the crank generator side of the pack, so we're going to put the block in vertically and it's going to butt up against the lower edge of the crank generator. Mark the block on your foam, add a handle to the block, cut a doorway, this time it's going to be double doors, because there's not enough room inside to angle the piece of wood in, so it's got to just go straight down. Apply glue to the bottom end and the top of the block, and pop it in place. Slide it down until the edge of the wood touches the edge of the foam, and then pull up against the doors. For the bottom mounting points, you don't even need a door, because you've already got a big hobbit hole cut out for them. So just glue them up and slide them in. Just watch that you don't burn your fingers though, that's a lot of hot glue in a kind of awkward situation, so just be careful. Make sure to wait until your glue is totally cooled and then you can remove the little screw handles. Now the center support mounts are a little trickier, they're going to have one block going vertical and one block going horizontal. You can use your fingers to press on the back of the foam to figure out where the edges of the components are. That way you can make sure your blocks end up inside the components and not outside. Make your marks, cut your doors, slide in your blocks, and glue them. Here's a little overview of where all my mounting points ended up. Now you can drill some holes through the frame into the mounting points. Just make sure to drill gently when you're going through the wood so you don't break the glue bond. Also use as big a drill bit as you can that will still allow the screw threads to grab. That just means there will be less torque on that wood block while you're screwing it in. Slide the center support into place. You'll notice it ended up a little bit above the marks on the frame, but that's okay. Now remember how I said to only put one rivet on that brace piece? That's so you can swing it up out of the way and drill holes through the bottom bar into the wood blocks. Alright, now unscrew all the screws, sand around the mounting points, and glue your spacer discs on top of the screw holes. You can put a screw through the center of the disc to help line it up with the hole. My screws are a lot thinner than the holes in the spacer blocks, so I'm going to jam some quarter inch vinyl tubing into the holes to tighten things up a bit. Now it's time for a final test fit. And it turns out I need to add a thinner spacer under that center bar. There. Now everything's looking good. Add a rivet to permanently hold that center bar in place, and unscrew everything again. Countersink some screw holes, and you're ready to paint. But first, a little strength test. Wow, that's pretty strong. Yes it is. Spray paint! regular paint. While that's drying, grab your box of random sewing supplies and look for the excess webbing section. Find some 2 inch webbing and a buckle from your buckle bag. Sew one end of the webbing to the buckle, feed the webbing through the webbing slots, buckle it up and you've got a nice soft back thing. Now go to a thrift store or garage sale and find a backpack with straps you can use. Bonus points if you find one from the 70s with a Canadian flag. The one I'm using got eaten by a mouse, so it was free. It also came with a sock in one of the pockets. Start taking apart the pack as much as you can by undoing things, and then start cutting things. Of course every pack is going to be different, but basically I'm trying to release the shoulder straps and the waist belt. The waist belt came apart in three pieces, so I had to sew that back together. I cut the center section shorter too while I was at it. Made some marks 2 inches apart on the back of the waist belt, and sewed some webbing on, leaving the center part open. Now the 2 inch webbing from the pack frame can fit through those loops. Add a little bit of webbing at the top of the shoulder straps for reinforcement, and attach them on the bottom edge of the top bar by screwing a couple screws right through the webbing and the material. Then you can mark their placement, drill holes, and attach them. 
I used one of these little things to attach the bottom part of the strap to the pack frame. Another hardware store trip for some foam pipe insulation, cut a 22 centimeter long piece and put it on over top of the top bar and the straps. Some handy little self-adhesive edges makes it super simple and a couple zip ties ensure that that thing is never coming off. Now you can screw the frame back onto the proton pack, paint those screw heads black and go dance around. All right, that's it. Super sweet pack frame that you can make yourself. Check out the links in the description and at the end of the video for the pattern. And also check out my other patterns because they're amazing too. Thanks for watching. See ya.